Hi, I'm, I'm Rochelle Dicker, and I was previously at UCSF until about four months ago, um, where I was the uh, co-director of the Center for Global Surgical Studies. I'm planning to start that here at UCLA as well. Uh, and so I'm uh, currently right now the, the vice chair for critical care in the Department of Surgery here. And I will also be working with the Department of Health Services in Los Angeles County because, uh, because Los Angeles County has a very significant issue with, um, with injury, particularly violent injury. Um, so I'm going to be helping with that. So um, I'm really thrilled to speak with you because your uh, internal medicine really are the champions of global health and looking into issues with vulnerable populations. You've made such headway in areas such as HIV and antiretrovirals um, that we have learned a lot in the world of global surgery from you. And you'll see that because we use a lot of your techniques um, and compare ourselves a lot to to the pathology that you see as internal medicine doctors. So, um, so I hope this speaks to you. And with that, I will continue. Please let me know, of course, if you're having any trouble seeing the slides and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make the screen larger. There's my disclaimer. I have nothing to, I have nothing to disclaim. Um, and so, as you can see there, there's, there's my face from a few years ago. I have a few more years on me now. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit at first about injury as a public health issue. Uh, and to that, what do I really mean? Um, well, a lot of, a lot now as a result of the Lancet Commission work that was do done in 2013 has finally highlighted the fact that injury and surgery in general is in, indeed a public health issue. And so we're gonna go through what that looks like, um, injury as a public health problem. And so these are some of the main takeaway things that I'd like you to um, be considering from this particular talk. We'll go through a little bit about the disability adjusted life years and injury surveillance um, and the, the relevance of doing this kind of work, this kind of study, to really understand the impact of violence and the impact of unintentional injury in low and middle income countries. And then some efforts in prevention and treatment um, and, and some of the work that we've done with our partners there in Cameroon and our partners in Uganda. So I'm gonna start right off by demonstrating to you that injury indeed is a public health issue. By definition it is, it takes nearly 6 million lives worldwide every year. And we probably don't really even know exactly how many. We know that it's at least 6 million, but we're concerned that it actually is more. And so you, you think about it in terms of what progress you've made in, um, in HIV and antiretrovirals. Say you have been giving people um, antiretrovirals for a significant part of their life, and now they're 25 years old and they get on a BOTA and they're in a very bad crash and are head injured. So you've made this huge investment in this individual and, then, and they're living well, uh, and then injury takes them. Um, and so that's why really our disciplines are very interrelated, I feel. Injury right now is the leading cause of death and disability worldwide in people less than 60 years of age. That's actually still a little known fact, but it takes people really right at the prime of their lives. And 90% of that burden is carried by low and middle income countries. So 90% of the injuries that are seen in the world are, are actually happening in low and middle income countries as far as we can tell. And as I mentioned, uh, all injuries cost about five to six million deaths per year. And you can see the impact of traffic injuries and violence compared to malaria, tuberculosis, and HIV. Um, and this is in the millions of, of deaths per year um, that are taken by these disease processes. Road traffic injuries themselves, as I mentioned, uh, like with the motorcycle crash, are a leading cause of death among people 10 to 24 years old worldwide. And mortality rates by region in the industrialized world, there are 49 per 100,000 injury related deaths. And it's, uh, it's really almost double that in the in uh, low and middle income countries. 
injury mortality rates are much higher in developing countries. And that's where we really want to put our, why we want to put our focus in helping to bolster trauma systems from prevention all the way to rehabilitation. Injuries are growing, especially in low and middle income countries. And this is a, a fairly famous now slide from the World Health Organization. So injury takes more lives per year than HIV, TB, and malaria combined. And many of you probably already know that. It's becoming more and more known. And the reason that it's a growing problem is the industrialization of low and middle income countries. So you have a lot of shared road users here. You have, you, you have someone who is a pedestrian in the crosswalk. You have many cars, you have motorcycles, and you have bicycles. Um, and you can imagine the engineering chaos that comes with that and the injuries as a result. Road traffic injuries are likely to become the fifth leading cause of death overall, just, just road traffic injuries, that's not injury altogether, by 2030. And then there's an additional mortality, morbidity burden that I'll show you later. Economically, the lowest 2 billion people receive only 3.5% of the surgical care. Injury falls under, under the auspices of surgery um, in a lot of places. Of course, it's also um, uh, within the umbrella, under the umbrella of emergency care as well. And as I mentioned, you know, the ultimate human investment in the care of the people with comorbidities. So the, the example I gave you was the person who has HIV and, is, and, ha and the government and our societies have rightly so invested significant money in antiretrovirals, but then that person ends up being injured by a car um, and it, it's, it, we haven't made that ultimate investment until we all work together and recognize that it's about the human, not necessarily about the disease process. How do we protect people from all these different potential harms? And our understanding of injury epidemiology and trauma care in these, sending, in, in these settings is still limited. And I'll go through with you, actually in Cameroon, there are several trauma registries um, that have been developed in partnership with, um, with our group at ECSF. And then you've seen this slide, of course, the distribution of health workers. And it's even, it's even more significantly lopsided when, when it comes to the surgical workforce. So here's a good example. Um, and I, my, my biggest passion about uh, being a trauma surgeon is that I really want to write myself out of a job. I want there to be good enough prevention that I never have to deal with somebody who has been in a car crash and needs to have their spleen taken out. That's, that would be my, my, my biggest dream. So here you have uh, all the different road users. You have potentially a truck that doesn't have great brakes carrying a really large load. You have a, a car that can become very easily disabled. You have a pedestrian coming here with poor sidewalks somebody passing on the left um, on, a, on a motorcycle. So you can imagine here in this slide, all the potential dangers to the road users, but also the potential opportunities for injury prevention, trying to put in sidewalks, all these engineering feats that you can envision um, can make this a safer place. And that's an investment, but over time it will save lives. Um, so well worth the investment indeed. And here again is that perspective of how many lives are taken um, annually by injury relative to, to other disease processes. And, um, and here again it is what it looks like if you look at the overall global surgical burden of disease, uh, we see that malignancies also take a significant amount um, and then congenital anomalies as well. But injury is 38% of the overall surgical burden when you just break it down by surgical issues.